Electropalatography, also known as EPG, first began in 1938 when Herbert Cope Baker created the electropalatography proper, more formally known as the phonokinesiograph. This specific instrument consisted of an artificial palate made of shellac with a 1 23rd inch thickness. The palate consisted of 10 electrodes, which were connected to an amplification system through a small wire which exited the mouth. The data was recorded as continuous contact traces on a paper chart. Currently, we will be looking at the Complete Speech Smart Palette EPG system and basing our demonstrations on its functioning. For easier understanding, we will refer to this system as a Smart Palette. The Smart Palette has 126 sensors to detect tongue-to-palate contact, much better than the 1938 version. Electropalatography treatment has been widely used on those who have had a reparative cleft palate surgery. But due to the way the treatment is used, those with repaired cleft lips only would not benefit from EPG treatment. This treatment is especially helpful for those who are having difficulty adjusting to making sounds with their repaired palate. Once your SLP decides on this form of treatment, the smart palate system is easy to obtain. You, the client, will receive a smart palate dental packet in the mail. Inside, you will find a stone model box with instructions for your dentist to help make a mold of your upper palate. Second, make an appointment with your dental provider so they can take an impression of your palate. They will ship it back to Complete Speech for you. Upon receiving your mold, Complete Speech will make a custom smart palate just for you and will mail it to your SLP. Almost immediately, you will be able to begin EPG visual feedback therapy. The client, John David, who you will see in this video, is a six-year-old male with a supposed repaired cleft palate. This client also has bilateral cochlear implants. EPG treatment was chosen because he is such a visual learner and the EPG provides immediate visual feedback to both the client and clinician. Despite the age of our client, electropalatography treatment was thought to be the most beneficial for treating his articulation errors due to the visual feedback given. Although a previous study found that children five years of age did not benefit from this form of treatment, every case is different and is based on the motivation and attention put forth by the client. Targeted sounds would include any lingua palatal sounds, as this would trigger a response from the EPG machine. The selection of target sounds is also based upon those that affect the client's intelligibility the most, as well as his or, or her age or developmental level. Our therapy focused on two sounds, T and S, as these were found to be positively affected by EPG therapy in Gibbon et al. and Maine and Series studies. Baseline data would be obtained by having the client produce the S and T sounds for 10 productions with no cues given. The Smart Palette system has a software program called Palette View in which you can save sessions as well as record productions. The software analyzes the data for you, tells you where the errors are happening, and provides a percentage to put the incorrect productions into a numerical form. Both the numerical and visual feedback help to better assess progress in treatment. Visual feedback will be given from the Palette View software program. Verbal praise will be given by the SLP after correct productions and redirecting for an incorrect production. After 10 productions, whether correct or incorrect, when starting out, the client will get to play one round of Hungry Hippo on the iPad. At the end of each session, if the client has followed all rules and has gotten through his productions for the session, he gets one sticker. After three stickers, the client gets to go to the treasure box. First, the SLP would work on sounds in isolation using the articulate palette piece. Once he's having mastered, the client would move on to sounds and syllables and sounds and words while still using the articulate palette. When the client is ready to move on to sounds and phrases, sentences, and at conversational level, the reading palette piece needs to be used. Once the client has the smart palette in his or her mouth and sounds are beginning to be produced, the screen might look similar to this. The green dots represent the target production, the blue dots represent the correct production, and the orange dots represent the incorrect production. The waveform at the bottom represents the airflow during a sound production. Here you can see the sound that is being worked on, which is the S or S sound. Here you will see two areas circled. The area at the bottom notes that we are looking at the student's production. 
It is also possible to view this as speaker two, which could allow the client to, to see productions which you, the SLP, have pre-recorded. As you may have noticed from the picture before, there were two drop-down boxes in the top left-hand corner. These boxes let you choose what sounds you want to target, as well as who you are targeting the sound with. The second box allows you to choose the amount of time you want the sound to be judged. After these have been chosen, the SLP or student needs to press the play button in order for recording and data collection to begin. Lastly, we see a number in the right hand corner. This represents the correct production percentage of the client. This percentage begins once the play button has been pressed and is based off of what sound is being produced how long the client is producing that sound, and how many times the client produces the target sound on his palette, noted by the blue dot. Hey, John David, we're going to have a fun time today, and we're going to try something new. A couple of weeks ago, you went to the dentist to get this super cool mold of your teeth made. We had it made into this, and we're going to practice using it today. It might tickle the roof of your mouth a little, but you'll get used to it. You ready? There we go. Now we're going to practice making a silly sound. Our first sound is one that this guy, Sammy the Snake, makes. What sound do you think that is? That's right, it is the S sound. Now you're going to make that sound 10 times, and each time you make the sound, you get to put one of these toys into this bucket. Let's practice. Make your sound. Okay, do another one. Awesome. One more. Keep going. Our therapy session will consist of showing our client a picture of a snake in the shape of an S. We will teach him that every time we point to the picture, we want him to produce this sound. The client will be asked to produce this sound 10 times using the smart palette and will be reminded to look at the palette view on the computer screen to see if his production is correct. When 10 productions, whether correct or incorrect, have been elicited, John David will be able to play one round of Hungry Hippos on the iPad. Each time the client produces a correct production, he will receive a token. At the end of the session, if the client has followed all rules, he gets one sticker. The same type of therapy will occur for the T sound. In a normal session, we would continue until all 10 of the S sounds have been produced to obtain sufficient baseline data. Now we will pick up after our baseline data has been collected and treatment will begin. It is important for the clinician to explain the palette view system to the client, which we explained to you, the viewers, earlier, so he can understand how to interpret the feedback he will be receiving. Let's try to make that sound again. Remember to keep your tongue close to your teeth. And you can look here at the screen to help you remember. Awesome job, you did it! Here's your token. Some advantages of EPG therapy include that it gives the user specific and immediate visual feedback. It also offers the ease of using any PC after you link in the smart palette USB port. It's compact and comfortable to wear around the neck, and it takes the guessing game of where a client's production is actually being made inside the oral cavity away for SLPs. It allows the session to be recorded, and it also allows the clinician to make correct productions in order for the client to compare in a side-by-side -side view. It appeared that there were few disadvantages to this form of treatment, but we thought that perhaps the smart palette getting made could be costly. It was also found to not always be beneficial for younger users, specifically those five years and under. There are also a limited number of SLPs in our area who use the complete speech system. You will see a couple of the ones closest to our region in the next slide.